the square. And we're going to answer the question, how can I generalize it? All right, so for question 83, it says solve each quadratic equation below by completing the square. You can use algebra tiles or draw a diagram if you want. And then write your answers in exact form. Then explain how you can determine uh, how many solutions a quadratic equation has once it is written in perfect square form. All right, let's start with problem A. A is x squared minus 6x plus 7 set equal to 0. Okay, so we are going to start by writing it in perfect square form. So we're going to take the coefficient of the x, which is our negative 6. If you divide that in 2, you get negative 3 which becomes your perfect square factor on the left, or your x minus 3 squared. And then for the right, you have to uh, move this 7 by doing the inverse operation to the other side, so you're going to subtract it, and then add the 9 there as well. As well. So how do we get the 9? You take that negative 3 and you square it. Okay? So we have perfect square form on the left, you combine the negative 7 plus 9 to get 2 on the right. And then we can do our inverse operations until we get our, two, our, our answers. Okay? So the inverse operation of squaring is square rooting. So when we square root the x minus 3 squared, we're left with x minus 3. It's just what's inside. And then when we take the square root of 2, we get the square root of 2, but we also get negative square roots of 2. So we're going to use that little plus minus symbol again. That is how we get our two answers. We're going to do the inverse operation of subtracting 3, which is to add 3 to both sides. And then we have 3 plus the square root of 2 and 3 minus the square root of 2. Told us to write our answers in exact form so we don't have to get the decimals this time. But if you needed the decimal, you could just type 3 plus the square root of 2 in your calculator and 3 minus the square root of 2 in your calculator, and you'd have your answer in decimal form. Now, this looks like one answer, but how many answers are really there? Two. Because of that plus minus symbol, there are actually two answers right there. Okay, everybody see that? Thank you. All right, let's look at problem B. Problem B happens to already be a perfect square trinomial. Because if you take half of 2, you get 1. Right? Half of 2 is 1. And 1 squared is 1. So this one is already in perfect square form for us. So we're just going to say p plus 1 squared. It's set equal to 0, which makes this problem a little bit faster than you would normally have. Right? When you take the square root of both sides, you have p plus 1 equals plus or minus 0. And when you add or subtract 0, you get the same number. So the inverse operation of adding 1 is subtracting 1. So negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. And negative 1 minus 0 is also negative 1. So this type of problem only has one answer happens to be the same answer twice. Okay, So that one has one solution. That happens when you're set equal to zero. That's what causes that to happen. Okay? <coughs> All right, letter C. We have k squared minus 4k plus 9. If you take half of negative 4, you get negative 2. So that becomes your perfect square on the left. You're going to say k minus 2 squared. And then if we square that negative 2, we get 4. So this 9, you have to actually subtract it to the other side first. And then the negative 9 and the 4 combine to get negative 5. So this is our perfect square form right here. So we're going to square root both sides. When we square root the left, we're just left with the k minus 2. When we square root the right, we get the square root of negative 5. Which, at this point in your math career, is a problem. At this point in your math career, you don't know how to take 
the square root of a negative number. So you say no real solution. Okay, later in this chapter, like I've been telling you, there is going to be an imaginary solution, which is part of a complex number. Okay, but for now, you just say no real solution. But it's coming. Okay, so these are three different types of answers. Part A, remember, had two solutions. Part B has one solution. And part C has no real solution solution. Okay? So you can get those three types of answers depending on what kind of number your perfect square equation is set equal to. This one is equal to a positive number. This one is equal to a zero. And this one is equal to a negative number. Okay? So if you're set equal to a positive number, you should have two answers. If you're set equal to zero, you should have one answer. And if you're set equal to a negative number, you should have no real solution. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Question number 84, we're going to skip. So just write skip and jump down to question 85. Question 85 says, Jessica... Jessica wants to complete the square to rewrite x squared plus 5x plus 2 equals 0 in perfect square form. First, she rewrites the equation as x squared plus 5x equals negative 2. So she just did the inverse operation and subtracted the 2. But how can she split the 5x tiles into two equal parts? Jessica decides to use force. She cuts one of the x tiles in half and starts to build a square from the tiles representing the x squared plus 5x as shown below. Okay? So because she had five of these x tiles, she cuts one of them in half and puts one of them up here and one of them down here. She needs to fill in this part right here with the proper amount of unit tiles, okay? So you can fit one right there that's a hole, one right there that's a hole, one right there that's a hole, one right there that's a hole. But right here, what are you gonna squeeze in? A quarter, because if you cut it, in, if you take half times a half, you're gonna get a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. Does that make sense? You're gonna be filling in quarters, you're like cutting algebra tiles in, into smaller pieces, okay? So question A says how many unit tiles are missing from Jessica's square? So we have the four that were right there, and then we have five of the quarter ones. So if you have five of the quarter ones, four of them is going to make a hole, and then you have one extra quarter left, which means you should have a total of six and a quarter, which is what happens when you multiply 2.5 times 2.5, okay? Help Jessica finish her problem by writing the perfect square form of her equation. <coughs> so each of the sides is x plus 2.5, and x plus 2.5. So that's the perfect square side of it. Remember we had to subtract we had to subtract the 2. So when we take the 6.25 and we subtract the 2, we actually end up with 4.25 on the right side. And that would make our perfect square equation. A little complicated, but that's how it would work. All right? It's a good thing we don't have to cut those in, in half in real life, or into quarters in real life. Any questions on question 85? All right, flip over to the top of page 86. We're going to skip question 86, and we're going to look at question 87. Question 87 says, 
Use the patterns you found in problem 86 to help you rewrite each of the equations below in perfect square form and then solve it. So I'm going to do A and C for you. And then in your groups of four, you guys are going to do B and D. Okay. Question A is W squared plus 28W plus 52 equals zero. So the first thing you want to do is the inverse operation of that adding 52. You're going to subtract the 52 from both sides. Okay. Then the next step. You're going to take the coefficient of the W, which is 28, and you're going to divide it by what? 2. You're going to divide by 2. 28 divided by 2 is 14. So on the left, your perfect square part is going to be W plus 14 squared. Okay? <coughs> then you have to take your calculator, because probably most of you don't have 14 times 14 memorized. Does anybody have 14 times 14 memorized? You do? Okay. It's 196, right? Okay. So we're going to take the negative 52 plus 192, or 196, and you get 144. That sets up your perfect square equation. Okay? Then you're able to just do inverse operation and see how many answers you're going to have. Okay? So you take the square root of both sides which leaves you with what's inside, which is the W plus 14. <coughs> and then you take the square root of 144, which is 12, but it's also negative 12, so you've got to write the plus minus. This was equal to a positive number, so how many answers should we have? Two answers, right? Okay, then we need to do, to do the inverse operation of adding 14, which is subtracting 14. And then with your calculator, you can do the two answers. So negative 14 plus 12 is negative 2. And negative 14 minus 12 is negative 26. So we got two answers, just like we predicted. Okay? Any questions on part A? All right. Jump down to C. And then you guys are going to come back and do B and D with your group. All right. For C, we have the equation K squared minus 16K equals 17. Okay. So the 17 is already over on the right side. It's not set equal to zero. So we don't have to do that step. <coughs> we can just jump to the step of taking half of that negative 16. So what is half of negative 16? Negative 8. So on the left, you're going to write k minus 8 squared. And then we're going to square negative 8. What's negative 8 times negative 8? 64. So we're going to add 64, and this is where the 81 comes from. You're going to add the 17 plus the 64, which just so happens to be 81. Okay? Now it's in perfect square form. We have perfect square on the left. It's set equal to a positive number. So we should have how many answers? Two. Two answers again. Okay? So we're going to take the square root of this side, which leaves us with k minus 8. We're going to take the square root of this side, which leaves us with positive and negative 9. The inverse operation of subtracting 8 is adding 8. And then we can get both of our answers. This one you can probably do in your head, right? 8 plus 9 gets us the 17. And 8 minus 9 gets us negative 1. Two answers just like we predicted. Okay? In your groups of four, 